Hey everyone, Brian from WorkshopAddict.com and we are going to take this Makita Combo Kit. It's an 18 volt LXT two piece combo kit, model number XT269M and we are going to torture these tools like you haven't seen before to the point where they are no longer working. We're going to take you to a playground away from here and we're going to have a load of fun so make sure you stick with us. We want to thank Acme Tools for loaning us these tools. We promise to give them back in more than one piece and that three year warranty that's there, it's not gonna apply to us because we are gonna absolutely destroy these. But we're gonna kind of give you an idea through this process as to what tools can live through, especially you know these combo kits. They're a little bit cheaper. This isn't the high end drill of Makita's and it's a single speed impact driver. So the drill is model number XPH one two it's a two speed drill zero to 500 rpms on low zero to 2000 rpms on high it does have a hammer function in it has 30,000 bpm on high nice drill very comfortable we're going to do some performance testing prior to taking it out and it has the impact driver xdt 13 3400 no load rpm 3600 ipm Kit comes with two 4.0 amp hour batteries that do have the fuel gauge on the back. Pretty nice solid kit for somebody who's gonna work and it has a box. Don't worry, we will test this box out too, see what it will go through. Uh, nice kit, I like when you get a kit with two larger batteries. Makes sense, you know, if you're gonna buy two tools, don't give me two compact batteries, I'm gonna use these things, you know. Let's not buy two tools where we have to actually go out and buy another battery just to use them for long periods of time. I appreciate that. We're gonna have some fun with this. I hope you have some fun watching this. Let's get to it. Little performance stats for you before we go out. We took the impact driver and we're using these lumber line six inch lags and they were going into some two by fours and a six by six, no issue. In fact, I'd call that a very, very nice impact driver. No issue at all. And I also used it to kind of put some things back together in a side by side, very controllable, very easy to use. It's a single speed, but worked awesome. Now we moved on to this drill and I pulled out a one inch spade bit. Didn't think that was anything too crazy, running it on high, going through two two by fours, no bueno. Not happy, uh, it could try to maneuver its way through a couple times, but eventually it would get hot, cut out and high and shut down. So I moved over to a hole saw, which two and nine sixteenths, not a big deal. Figured, hey, we'll try it. It was a lot for this drill, definitely no bueno in uh, speed two or high. Went down to low and this unit went from an absolute dog to awesome. Uh, this thing had a ton of power and low, more than you'd want to have without a side handle. It was moving my wrist around quite a bit. I had all I could do to hang on to it, but boy did this sucker get hot and it got hot fast. The vents in the back were not something you'd want to even have your hand around, but I continued to drill quite a few more holes to try to get through, find its breaking point cut out a couple times and I just kept on going past it. Uh, when we got done, I threw the battery on the charger. It is charging, no thermal timeout. Got out the thermal imaging camera. We saw 114 degrees up around the top motor area in the back, kind of where we've seen a lot of other tools start to get a little bit finicky. But then the cool part, when you went down into the handle and around the battery, you could see the actual battery cells inside the case. They were warm. It was saying around 97 degrees, but I'm sure inside there, they were quite a bit warmer. So performance wise on the drill, definitely not the highest performing drill that we've ever had in high speed, but when you go down to low, she's got some grunt. So let's move on to some torture testing. So to start off testing, this is a combo kit and it comes with a plastic case. And a lot of times these plastic cases can be looked at as good or bad. This one is by far one of the best ones we've used. You know, people either like the bags or they like the cases. And when it's a plastic case, especially with two tools, two batteries and a charger, you could go, well, so why not try to do a little destruction? You know, we just started dropping it about six foot, maybe eight foot and 10 foot. Yep. And, and then, then actually stood it up on end and dropped it on a corner. It, the case itself survived real well. When it uh, dropped the last time, it hit on a corner and it pushed the tools up. So it kind of bubbled the top, which made it a little bit hard to open. But once we jiggled the tools around, everything went back into place. 
there's really not a scratch on the case. It, no, it's, you wouldn't even know it was. If we wiped it off, it's like new. Yeah. No warranty issues on the case at all. No. So as far as a case that comes with this, more than impressed. Well more than impressed with how it turned out, how it lasted through all the drops. Then we just wanted to separate out the tools and say what is going to work. So we're at our playground at our buddy's place <laughs> and we pulled out his John Deere skid steer and we are running these guys through sand. Started out with class two sand. It's a little stickier than your beach sand or whatever. So if it gets in there, it's not just going to fall right up. And it pass that test with flying colors. It's odd when you start to push and just roll these tools around in the sand. Uh, it, this is mimicking, I guess, someone who's working on a job site, lost their tool in the sand and is trying to find it. You know, think a lot of plumbers are working down in the trench. They grab their tool, they throw it back up on the, on the bank. It's in the mud, it's in the sand, and they survive really well. No, so we sat there dumping these tools over and over, pull them out, they run. Now when you turn them on, they're blasting you with sand mm -hmm. from the inside and it continued. And from the sand part, we moved on to... Six double A crushed limestone. Which is dusty. Yeah, and it's you know three quarter inch stone, sharp edges, same thing. Put them in the bucket, scoop them up, dump them, scoop it up, dump it. And you turn them on and they blew dust out, but they worked great. It's amazing when you watch this get dumped over and over again. And while the tools seem to float up to the top a little bit, but they're just getting pounded over and over with a ton of rocks. And while that test here isn't saying, okay, look, uh, short term, look what it does. This is more realistically simulating what a tool is going to go through over its lifetime. Yeah, you're getting all that dust and everything inside the motor and the components. And you not just the dust and you're pounding it with everything. And I'm surprised at how well the tools look when you actually pull them out. Which we've got footage of that after we washed them off. Yeah, I mean, that's just, it was great. From there, we moved on to crushed asphalt, which just seemed like that it's, pile's been there a while. It yeah, it's a lot more abusive. It's hard. It put the tools through, I mean, I don't know if I want to say impact, but you're compressing them when you're forcing that in the bucket. The first couple drops were significantly harder than the last couple, as anything with asphalt is it packs, and then it gets loose again, and then a little bit of rain hits it, and it'll pack down. Yeah, but and the sun hits it, it tightens up. So that test, again, was just more of the same long-term abuse of what's gonna happen as these tools get thrown around and used. And from there, we wanted to come back and just say, hey, What's their performance? One thing I noticed every time we were dumping it in stone, not so much the sand, but in stone or the asphalt, the light would be on on this one. I think that there was an issue with that one from our first time I threw it in the bucket or from when we dropped it, because I think the battery came undisconnected mm -hmm. when we dropped it in this guy and we never really reconnected it. So but when it was rolling around in the bucket, it might have, the light, yeah, you know, the and all you gotta do is hit the button and turn the light on. There was a lot happening, and that's why we want to take that break and go in and just say how the tool is going to work, compare them to our performance test from before. We dropped down to a three-quarter inch spade bit for the drill, just because the one inch was having some issues before, and it still seemed to work fairly well. It worked better in low again. Yeah, High I mean, speed, it's not really that big power monster. And we buried it four and a half, five inches. Yeah, it, it's still good, but I mean, it's it's not that power monster. And again, if you're doing some of this stuff, it's rated for half inch is what it's rated for on masonry, wood, and um, steel. So you'd want a side handle for anything more than that, and it doesn't come with it. And then we use the six inch lags again on the impact driver. And man, that little guy's nice. Yeah, it, it works no great. With him. No, just buried him in. Then we wanted to go <clears throat> back and say, more torture. Crushed concrete. That stuff had rebar in it. You name it, it's in that. And the size is two and a half to three inch for crushed concrete. Dumping it over and over and over. In fact, we had a guy come up and say, why are you just picking things up and dumping <laughs> and it again? Them. You're really not doing anything? And then we showed them what we're doing. And we are, I mean, this is more than a long-term test as to what these things go through. These tools should not see that. If they do, no. you're being abusive. Yeah. But what was interesting is even with the batteries connected through this whole test, 
even if the, the drill battery was a little tight to get on and off, it still worked well. Yeah. They stayed connected. The tools worked even when we were done with the crushed concrete. There was a lot of dust in there also. And but we never had to re pull a battery and reset it. Mm -mm. And they worked every time. Yeah, I mean, you, you turned them on, they blew a bunch of smoke out, and they continued to blow all that dust out, and they continued to just to keep kicking. And I think that is a huge testament to these tools because there's, a lot of tools can put up with a lot of stuff, but what we're doing is a little excessive at this point. Yeah, I mean, we're going beyond the normal use, and you're actually testing the case and everything. Right, from there, yeah, it was doomsday. Jeff really wanted to run it over, run one of the tools over with the skid steer. This is a 10,000 pound plus unit. And it's a track machine. And that's, you know, all oh, the tracks make it float, right? It makes um, it float over stuff, but right. it's still. It, they're rubber tracks and you got all the wheels. So as you watch it drive over, you can see it clunk and just bury each time it drove over. So we did find out that inside uh, the four amp hour Makita batteries, they do have Samsung batteries or Samsung cells. So we got a nice look on the and inside. See, if I wouldn't have ran it over, we'd never know. That. <laughs> there's a, there's a, quite a bit of carnage came out of that battery. So we decided, but you know, once we switched batteries, the, the, it still worked. Right. No issue. We just, we killed the battery with that. We didn't kill a tool. No, it just. So all that weight, that's impressive. Very impressive. There's there's no comparison to the real world use of these tools with what we just did to it. No. And then we thought we should wash them because they were dirty. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't clean their tools? Well, Maybe not in soapy water. Yeah, but <laughs> hey, we and, had to get them clean. And at that point again, we had another guy walk by and go, you can, you can do put, that? Well, you can put tools in water. <laughs> no, not typically not. And we got a little crazy. We actually used the impact driver to mix up the soapy water at one point and had mm -hmm. suds thrown everywhere. I mean, the tools are taking a beating and they're keeping on going. It, it was, again, a testament. Makita's got something here because they're kicking it. We did not douse our last battery in water because we wanted to make sure that we had a battery to continue testing. I think from there, it just got out of hand. I don't know if I'd call it out of hand. It's just so much as having fun. Well, if you ever decide to leave your tools on the ground with Jeff driving, would you back over it with? Uh, Michigan Special Kenworth with a four axle rock box. Weight probably around 34,000 pounds. You know, the, the, I think it was the impact driver that took the first hit, uh, but the drill held up for the first two axles. And then after that, it got heavy, and once we got to the axles on the semi, then the weight started kicking it. And the, after the front axle rolled over where all the engine is and the weight on that, it was over. I'll so, have to watch the video. I was in the cab. I didn't get to it, see it. It was over. It was, it, it was interesting. We, we tore these tools up. I mean, you could, we looked inside of them. You can see all the wiring, and we, we actually tried to bend them back together because we thought, realistically, we just... Well, I don't we know didn't if do the motor still spun. Yeah, we didn't do too much to the tools. I can see on this one now that we bent a couple things. I mean, it's it's right out in the open. But still, I think if you could go back and put a couple wires back together, these tools would still run. The drill, the LED light was running for a little while when we had it hooked up, but we really couldn't get anything else to go. I think it's a huge testament to these tools that you can go out and just kick their ass over and over and over again, and you have to get as excessive as driving over them with a semi and a lead to break them. I mean, I, yes, that broke them, but I'm more impressed that a 10 or 11,000 pound skid steer on tracks did not hurt it. It blew the battery apart, but the machine still worked. And, and again, if, yeah, you're right, I'm flat out. That, if you have to tool. watch that too, because you were getting in the cab, you have to watch that tool just sit and bind in those wheels over and over. So if you guys, uh, are looking for a set of tools, a combo set. I know this was asked for us to do by one of our viewers. He said, hey, get this Makita kit and try it. Here it is, man. Thanks again to Acme Tools who allowed us to loan out these tools to them. 
Uh, we'll send this back to you ASAP. You guys can maybe <laughs> use them for something. Maybe get them the to work. The case is still good. The case rocks. And that is something that you don't see all the time. So again, we're going to continue doing this to some different combo kits. You know, if somebody's watching us and they say, hey, check out my combo kit. See what you can do. Um, drop tests. We don't have stairs. That's the one thing somebody said. Hey, put them downstairs. But we don't have... I mean, you're going to drop them down our stairs. They're going to go into the drywall. Right. That doesn't tell us. I mean, we need commercial stairs that are concrete at the bottom. And yeah, if anybody out there has ideas of what you want us to do with them, put in the comments. Know. Yeah. We'll do it. We're not scared. So give us a like, subscribe to our channel, watch us on Instagram and Facebook. We appreciate your time, guys. Have a great day.